This tutorial is an introduction to concepts of 3D modeling in Aspire. Using a PowerPoint presentation, we will explain the core design principles, including pixel resolution and the rules for success. Following that, we will take a look at ways to create 3D geometry, the typical workflow you should adopt, and toolpath routines to machine the part. Now, many of you may be aware or have used an existing CAD package that includes such things as surfaces, solids, and fillets that come together to create a far more geometric style part. But given the nature of the type of parts that people want to create in Aspire, that engine would not be suitable. So with Aspire, essentially the model is represented by a grid of 3D points, all of which are being pushed up to different heights and is very similar to the concept as shown in the pin art toys you can see in the lower right hand corner where you essentially push your hand behind them and it's moving the points up and down. So in Aspire you can have a million as a minimum number of points or more and that as a result can represent a far greater more sculptural form as you have far greater control over each of those individual points. In Aspire, we typically refer to these as pixels. So similar to pixel resolution with an image, we have pixel resolution with a 3D model in Aspire. Now in the software, the pixel resolution is actually termed model resolution. So let's take a look at the form that we have within the software. And when you create a new job, you'll have the option to select your modeling resolution, currently set at very high on the right hand side, but we do have three options. Standard resolution, which has 1 million points, high resolution, 2 million points, and very high resolution at 4 million points. Now the higher the settings, that means you will get a better quality 3D model, but you will also get longer calculation times, both in terms of creating the model itself and also in toolpath times. So with that, you need to bear in mind that if you have a very simple model, it may be worth having a standard resolution. But if you're doing something far more complicated, maybe like hair on a face, then you may need to have high resolution in order to make sure you get the quality in the model. Uh, please be aware that the resolution does not affect jobs that have only 2D or 2.5D content. It only represents models that have 3D modeling content. And if you go to the uh, Vectric FAQ under support.vectric.com, there's far more questions regarding issues of model resolution that you may wish to take a look at before you start any modeling. Okay, so when considering resolution, what are the rules for success? Well, the first is to maximize the size of the 3D model within the job space. Make sure that the job space itself is just slightly larger than the part you're planning to toolpath allowing enough border for a cutout tool to go around afterwards. You can see here from the horse's head that we have minimized the X and Y to just ensure that we have just the model itself and enough space for the cutout tool. Now what you mustn't do is to make the job size the size of the material or table, of course, unless that's the size of the part you're cutting, but in this case here, we might have say a four by eight sign and we can see that the horse's head is actually going to sit in the lower left hand corner. And we wanted maybe a very high detail for that horse's head. So in which case that would be cut as a separate part where we can maximize the resolution and then bring that together and maybe add that on to the existing sign. So what we must do is make sure that we are maximizing the resolution underneath the part that's being cut. And what we can do is actually rotate the parts to best fit the shape. So for instance, if this horse's head was gonna be cut out and then actually mounted onto the sign, then we could afford to change its orientation and minimize the X and Y, thereby maximizing the resolution underneath the horse's head and getting a better quality finish. Now that we've dealt with the important issue of model resolution, let's take a look how we physically move these model pixels up and down to create the 3D finished model. Well, the pixel heights are actually set by creating 3D shapes in the software called components. So when we create a component, we're essentially moving these pixels up and down. Now these are managed in a component tree 
uh, which is located in the modeling tab as you can see here on the right hand side and the model itself can be made up of a combination of different components so it can be just a single component on a level or, or an assembly of many levels groups and components as shown on the right hand screen but the net effect of both is that the result will be shown in the 3D view. Okay, so now that we've established that components are the key to moving these pixels up and down to create the 3D shapes, we ought to look at how to create the components. Well, the main way of doing that is using the modeling tools in Aspire. So from the modeling menu, the top row of icons represent the key tools for creating components in Aspire, and they range from the create shape through to the add zero plane. So the create shape allows you to create rounded, sort of triangular or raised flat shapes um, the two rail sweep the extrude and weave essentially create sweat profiles you've got the spin and turn whether you want to take a profile and spin it round or in turn in case rotate it sculpting allows you to work essentially in sort of a, a 3d virtual clay where you're able to take a tool and to sculpt in whether you want to add remove uh, smooth sculpt etc uh, create textured area allows you to define a region and then apply a texture into that area and then add zero plane just to create a zero plane through the model. Um, as well as that you have the option to create the model from an image which enables you to take a bitmap JPEG style image, read that in and automatically create a 3D model from that. This could be key if you wanted, for instance, to take a texture, say for instance, a, a picture of some pebbles and read that in and then create that in 3D. Or alternatively, maybe if you're looking to create a lithophane uh, of somebody's face. Okay, so those are the key tools and uh, modeling tools in Aspire, but as well as that, you do have the ability to import a 3D model. And really, there are three different ways you can do that. One, you may have already created a model and then save that sort of 3D file as a, as a .rlf file from Aspire, and you may have that saved somewhere. Alternatively, you could have be uh, have saved that as a 3D clip art or be using some of the clip art that comes with the software um, and then you can import that into the model. Or alternatively, you can use uh, data from another CAD software program. Uh, maybe that's in the form of an SDL file, for instance, and you may want to bring that in, add some extra detail onto that before then toolpathing it. Okay, now that we've established that components are the key to creating a 3D model, we need to look at how we can piece together a number of these components to create a finished 3D model. So the start point will always be to define your job concept. So whether this be um, data that's come from your customer or images that you may have downloaded off the internet or your own sketches you may have scanned um, you need some start point as reference material then from that you need to build good quality vectors um, the better the vector the better quality component will be created and the better 3d model you will have at the finish so good quality vectors are key to creating a good quality design and then you need to start using the modeling tools to start piecing these components together. So rather than looking, for instance, in this case, the face as a single entity that needs to be built in one piece, this will actually be a series of components brought together with the different modeling tools to create the desired 3D effect at the end. So you need to be making sure that you use the uh, components in the right way using sub-assemblies of levels and groups and how they interact with each other and combining those within the component tree to create the desired shape. You may at certain points want to take individual components and add further sculpting or editing to them um, before we consider that as a full 3D model. So as of course with a lot of the modeling then iteration is particularly important uh, the ability to undo and redo allows you to explore different design concepts until you get the desired shape 
and then when you brought this all together you may want to apply editing tools over the whole model not just individual components so you can still sculpt and smooth over the top of the final 3d model to create the desired shape given the fact that we're happy with the 3d model we now need to look at how we're going to create the toolpaths with a view to machining this on our cnc so with that we need to take a look at the toolpath techniques that we have to create the final shape so for the machining of a sort of complex 3D model, we essentially have two different types of toolpaths, the roughing toolpaths and the finishing. In the top image, you can see the theatre masks that have been roughed machined. You can see there are clear step downs showing zones where the tool has come in and removed the material. Uh, with the roughing toolpath, you tend to work with a larger tool with greater step overs and step downs and leave an allowance from the model to make sure that we have some spare material to be cut away with the final finishing tool. So the finishing toolpath is shown with the sort of blue image on the screen, the second image down, and you can see that those blue lines represent the individual sort of toolpath moves of the tool going up and down over the part. And with that, you essentially create a very fine detailed toolpath to create this smooth model you can see in the lower right hand corner. And this will be using a smaller tool typically to ensure that you get into all the different regions and with a much finer step over to create a much tighter uh, a detailed effect. Now you can also combine the creation of the 3D toolpaths along with two and two and a half D toolpaths, whether that be um, some simple text or the cutting out of the profile around the outside. So quite often you'll combine the types of toolpaths within the same job. Similarly, you can also combine that with two and a half D toolpaths that can be projected onto the shape. For instance, if you'd modeled maybe a 3D flag design and you wanted to engrave some text onto it, you can project that 3D text, uh, 3D toolpath down onto the model, thereby creating a, a 2.5D toolpath over the top of your underlying 3D model. And of course, should you ever need to export the model from Aspire, you can do that either to import into another 3D CAD program, in which case you would export that as an SDL file. You may want to take that same SDL file and consider making it on a 3D printer. Or you can take the grayscale image or grayscale representation of the 3D model and output that for a laser. Okay, so this concludes the brief overview of modeling in Aspire. For anybody wishing to create their own projects, we suggest you take a look at all the different types of modeling tutorials, as each of them will have tips and tricks on how to create your desired model.